All right, let's look today at how to lube a Smith & Wesson J-Frame, the snubby. A lot of moving parts in a double action only pistol. This one's been uh, done from the Performance Center. It's still a pretty heavy pull. You wanna keep those parts lubed and clean. So of course this gun is empty. We're gonna ensure it's empty. And one of the things I want you to look at as you are lubing your gun is look for parts that you can see wear. So of course, if you look right here on the cylinder, you're gonna see a line right here. And that is making contact in a lot of points as this gun is moving. Some other spots that you know there's movement is right here, right? We've got movement there, we've got movement here, we've got movement here. But one thing we wanna do when we're gonna lube this, and I'll talk as I take this apart, I want you to see something really quick. So because I carry this gun, look at that, look at that screw, it's rusty. What, why is it rusty? Well, that's gonna happen. So we take a, take a sweaty body, put it next to the gun, but just a quick br bristle brush. Look at that, it's nice and clean again. So it's nothing to fret about, but in this lubing process, we're gonna make sure that we take care of that. So we're gonna take the grips off of the pistol, off the revolver, so we can get at this. One thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit of oil just to start in a rag. And while I do this, I'm gonna talk real quick. The point of these videos is to show you just quick maintenance lube tips. If you were gonna do a detailed strip on this gun and take it all apart, do that. A gun that I carry, I wanna from time to time be able to do a quick lube job to ensure functionality, ensure that I'm not doing anything that is gonna cause injury to the gun or uh, rather, I want to be able to preserve its life, right? Because that's what lube's for. That's why you change the oil in your car. Taking a brush here and just knocking off the good big bits. Because I do shoot the guns that I carry. So we've knocked the dust off, right? We've got it taken apart. If you've never taken one of these apart, that spring right there is doing quite a bit, right? You've, gotta, you've got to take care of that, that spring. If you go deeper and you take apart the clock works, inner workings of the gun, do that with either a gunsmith or knowing what you're doing. Right now, I just, again, want to show you ba some basic lube. A lot of guys use grease here. I'm going to put a few drops of oil on this. This is our gunfighter gun oil. It's a couple drops. I'm going to take my clean chip brush, wipe that around, ensuring that that is able to move well. Now I can look down inside of here. You'll notice right here, I've got a contact point, a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil. These needle bottles are great for that. Great. Gonna open the action. And if you look just right here, muzzle up, a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate that. Just rotate it, it's gonna drop down in there. While it's up and I'm not pointing the muzzle at myself or anything else, I can put a little bit right here on the hinge point of the arm. See that? Oil can. Pretty easy. I think a lot of guys have a lot of angst about how and where to oil your guns up. Use good oil. Don't put it where it doesn't belong for sure, but any tool that's made of metal needs lubricant, so it shouldn't be hard. We love this oil because this oil doesn't biodegrade. It's non-toxic, but it's not gonna break down in your gun safe. It is a very high quality. You can see the color of it. There's nothing added to it. It's a, actually, in other industries, similar oils are used in food production. So this oil is literally a food safe product. Doesn't mean you wanna eat it. it means it could be used around food. We're gonna come in here, put a drop right there, just a little bit, because that's rubbing here, right? As the gun, as the uh, cylinder unlocks, and that drops into the frame. You wanna make sure that that's able to move freely. If you wanted to, you could put a drop right here, and a drop right here, and work the action. Please, for the love of God, make sure your gun's unloaded and you're doing that in a safe direction as well. Don't get lax. Gun safety never goes away when you are 
cleaning. A lot of people shoot themselves accidentally while they're cleaning. We're gonna come up here. We're gonna put a drop there. We're gonna put a drop there. Very good. Could you take this gun apart deeper? Yes, you could. I am just doing a lube like I would do on a Saturday because I carry this thing all the time and I want to make sure that it's going to function. Gun is lubed. I'm now going to take the grip and I'm going to put it back together again. I'm going to take that screw and I'm going to start it a couple turns. And because I want to make sure that that sucker doesn't get rusty, put a little bit of oil on it, brush it on. Run that screw in, snug, snug, and then I'll wipe that off. But I know now I've got some good oil on that finish. Simple cleaning, simple lubing keeps these guns up and running. Anything that's got moving parts needs lubricant in them. You can see by the abuse on this gun, when I say abuse, I mean I'm using it. This comes in and out of the holster. I've shot literally thousands of rounds through this J-Frame and others, and I use them. As such, I want them to continue to work and be reliable, as well as not tear up the finish and cause injury uh, beyond normal wear and tear. Keep them wet, keep them lubed. Be super safe with them, but train with the results that you desire. Mickey with CarryTrainer.com, Drew behind the camera. And that's how to lube a J-frame for everyday carry.